Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. You are part of the 150 people worldwide who registered to this webcast powered by your development. This webcast will deal with the soaring and of the emerging non-volatile memory market. My name is David Jordan, and I am Global Sales Support and Coordination Manager for your development. So before we start, let me give you some practical information. Uh, you have the possibility to submit questions during all the webcasts. You can ask a question with the window at the bottom of the screen, and we will answer as many questions as we can. And for the remaining ones, we will follow up with you via email. Concerning the materials presented today, please note that they are already available and they can be downloaded from the resources section of the platform. Furthermore, you will receive an email with the link to the recorded webcast session tomorrow or in the 24 hours. So let's start this webcast. I am pleased to welcome Simone Bertolazzi, market and technology analyst at YOL and specialist of the uh, memory industry. Simone, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, David, for the introduction. And uh, good morning and good evening to everyone. And thank you very much for joining this uh, webcast on emerging and volatile memory technologies and market. It's really a pleasure for me to present the activities and the research that your development carried out in the field uh, of memories. We cover different types of memory technologies and markets, NAND and DRAM, which are the most uh, significant markets in terms of revenues, but also a number of different technologies, including those that are called emerging, in particular MRAM, resistive RAM, and also phase change memory. So I would like to start my presentation with uh, a premise, which is actually a clarification for what is coming next. So when we talk about uh, the emerging and volatile memory markets, we usually talk about two different types uh, of businesses, the standalone and also the embedded. So standalone memory refers to a memory chip which is entirely dedicated to the memory function. On the contrary, uh, an embedded uh, chi uh, memory is referred to the case uh, uh, of, uh, of a system on chip or a microcontrollers, for instance, when the memory is added into these uh, more complex systems. So the two businesses are very different. In the first case, we have uh, integrated device manufacturers, which are the most uh, uh, important companies uh, uh, leading the market. In the case of embedded memory, the most important players are foundries, which are uh, using the technologies for developing different types of products for their customers, like, for instance, microcontrollers uh, or system on chips or, or also processors. At slide five here, I would like to provide you uh, the outline of my talk for today. I will first uh, describe the uh, memory market. I will provide an overview of uh, the mainstream technologies, and I will compare the emerging technologies uh, to the uh, mainstream market, which is dominated by NAND and DRAM. I will also describe the key market milestones that happened in 2019 and, was, and they were really uh, important events for the emerging and volatile memory market. I can really say that 2019 was uh, an exciting year for emerging NVM with a lot of promising and exciting results. In the second part of the talk, I will describe the technologies, focusing mainly on MRAM, PCM, and uh, uh, RERAM. And I will also provide you with some information on the market projections that your development has elaborated for uh, these three uh, types of technologies. So these projections are done by applications, and I will describe all the spectrum of applications for emerging MVMs and also by uh, the different types of technologies. In the last part of the talk, I will try to describe the ecosystem for the development of uh, emerging MVM, and I will outline the challenges and the strategies that players within the, this ecosystem are adopting in order to uh, promote uh, the growth uh, of, uh, of revenues for emerging MVMs. So we start here with an overview of the uh, semiconductor memory market. What I want to point out in, at the beginning is that memory is really an important market segment in the uh, semiconductor world. 
So in 2018, memory accounted for approximately 34% of the overall uh, semiconductor market, and it was actually the second largest segment after logic uh, uh, integrated circuits. 2019 has been actually a difficult year for the memory industry, and the reason was that uh, after a record uh, high um, year, 2018, uh, we started having uh, a, a condition of, uh, of oversupply. And this oversupply was responsible for the price decline that we started having in 2019, and overall for the revenues decline that we had uh, in uh, 2019. So in 2019, the memory business uh, uh, dropped by more than 34 uh, percent, but still remains really a critical segment uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the overall semiconductor market. So in this following slide, you can see that if we consider the DRAM and NAND market in 2019 compared to 2018, we had a drop of approximately 34 percent. However, in 2019, the overall standalone memory market was approximately $111 billion, which is really an impressive, uh, 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 impressive numbers. So NAND and DRAM together were approximately 96% of this total market, so they are almost the, the, the entirety of the standalone memory market. And the remaining 4% consists of a number of different technologies. So you can see here we have the NOR market, which was uh, more than $2 billion in 2019. Then we had also the standalone SRAM and FRAM markets, then other EEPROM type of technologies. And uh, in this fraction, um, this four, in this 4%, we have also the emerging and volatile memory technologies, PCM, MRAM, and uh, RERAM. Together, these three types of technologies, they account for uh, approximately 0.5% of the standalone uh, uh, memory market. So this does not seem impressive, but when compared to uh, the total market, it's still a significant uh, business. And this business is expected to grow. So we can see in this slide eight that uh, uh, in the coming years, uh, we uh, forecast an increase in the overall emerging and volatile memory market from a 0.5% 2019 to uh, a bit less than 3% by 2025. Still, is not a, a large number, but we need to, we need to compare this uh, with uh, the huge size of the standalone memory market, which is uh, of the order of $180 billion by uh, 2025. I want also to point out the fact that uh, uh, NAND and DRAM will not be uh, displaced by emerging and volatile memory technologies. They will maintain their leading position over the next five years because we still have new uh, solutions to the technical challenges and the uh, business will continue to grow in the future. But emerging MVM is gaining momentum and uh, the business is expected to become a multi-billion dollar business uh, in the coming years. Okay, here I want to present uh, um, the key uh, milestones for, for the emerging and volatile memory market. So important events that occurred in 2019. I will start with, uh, at uh, the beginning of the year, in March, we had the Samsung Foundry that announced uh, the uh, production, commercial production of embedded STTM RAM on 28 nanometer FTSOI technology platforms. So this was really an important uh, uh, announcement that uh, uh, indicates the fact that there is momentum for the adoption of embedded uh, memories like MRAM for uh, uh, replacing uh, technologies like, for instance, the eFlash that uh, is facing some sort of scalability uh, problems at 28 nanometers uh, and beyond. Another event that is really important in the emerging of the memory market is the fact that finally, since April 2019, we have the persistent memory modules uh, by Intel obtained persistent memory, which is based uh, on uh, uh, 3D crosspoint uh, chips. So this is a phase change uh, uh, memory type of technologies, and this allows to uh, enable a number of interesting applications in the data center space. So at the bottom of these slides, you can also see a list of players that are involved uh, in uh, the process of utilizing and um, developing applications with persistent memories. So the, the list of companies is not non-exhaustive. So we have really a number of players that are using the technologies and are propelling also the sales and the growth of the business for uh, persistent memory. Intel recently reported that uh, they have 
approximately 200 ongoing proof of concept and uh, the rate of conversion of this proof of concept into real products and services is already exceeding 80 percent according to intel so this is uh, really interesting it means that there's momentum uh, growing in uh, in the data center space for the use of uh, uh, persistent memory we had also uh, Everspin in 2019 that uh, announced the beginning of production of one gigabit parts for STTM RAM. This is really interesting because novel applications can be uh, opened for, uh, for MRAM. And finally, at the end of the year, we had also Micron that announced uh, new drives based on 3D cross-point technologies. So this will be likely competing against the Optane uh, products and they might be available later on in, in, uh, in 2020. So I would like now to describe the technologies. So in our reports, Emerging and Volatile Memory, we consider for the market modeling, in particular, three technologies, PCM, uh, Resistive RAM, and STTM RAM. So you can see here a list, a non-exhaustive list of players that are involved uh, uh, in the development and the commercialization of the different uh, technologies. For PCM, it's worth mentioning that we have Micron and Intel that are the first players uh, that uh, uh, developed these uh, 3D cross-point technologies, and Intel was the first to start commercializing um, 3D cross-point in the forms of obtained drives back in 2017. So those are the leading players. We have also ST that is developing uh, uh, microcontrollers with embedded phase change memory. And then a number of players that are also carrying uh, uh, research and development activities uh, on um, PCM. For RERAM, so RERAM is actually uh, a broad term that includes a number of different technologies. Uh, so you have uh, on the right uh, some examples. OXRAM is based uh, on, on the use of um, transition metal oxide materials. And uh, we have different physical principles or chemical principles that are involved in the switching mechanism of the memory. Another interesting technology is the CBRAM, which is actually a technology trademarked by uh, Adesto a company in the Silicon Valley that started the, the uh, development of a CBRAM as a um, potential memory for replacing, for certain application, EEPROM type of uh, memory devices. And then we have also CMOX type of technologies uh, that uh, are based on interfacial phenomena occurring uh, between different materials uh, uh, included between, uh, between the electrodes. So different players are involved in these businesses, uh, including uh, Panasonic and Fujitsu that are also leading the standalone market, providing uh, parts with the densities up to 8 megabits. We have also a number of IP players that are really providing the technologies that can be adopted for uh, embedded applications by foundries. And then at the bottom of the screen, you can see also players involved in uh, the STTM RAM, Spin Transfer Torque uh, Magnetic uh, uh, RAM uh, technologies. Uh, Everspin has been historically the leader who's already commercializing the, te the technologies with parts up to one gigabit. And then we have uh, other uh, companies like uh, Avalanche Technologies and Spin Memory that are carrying out uh, important activities for the development and the commercialization of uh, uh, STTM RAM uh, technologies. We have also foundries that are really key players in this field that are adopting uh, uh, the MRAM for embedded applications like microcontrollers, IOTs, uh, and different types of products like wearables products. We shall see better in the, in the, in the next of the presentation. So in this slide, I reviewed the physical principles that uh, um, are used uh, by the different types of technologies. I want to stress the fact that the new memories are using physical principles or chemical principles in certain cases that are different from uh, traditional memories. If we consider flash, this is based uh, on the accumulation of charge into a trapping layer. And this accumulation of charge or depletion of charge is responsible for tuning for instance, the transition, the, the threshold voltage in a transistor. If we consider phase change memory, that's a different type of approach. In this case, we have uh, a material whose uh, physical state can be changed by uh, the application of a current that is uh, providing heat. For instance, we can change the physical state of the material from uh, um, from the solid state to amorphous, crystalline to amorphous, or vice versa. 
In the case of MRAM, the key physical principle is related to the change in uh, uh, the magnetization properties, the orientation of uh, magnetization in, uh, uh, within the materials that are composing what is called a magnetic tunneling junction. And the change in magnetization is, uh, is really associated with uh, the, the properties of, for instance, uh, a spin polarized current, depending on the type of technologies. But it's really different compared to what uh, is used uh, in, uh, in mainstream memory products uh, uh, like the flash-based. For RERAM, the switching is associated to different types of phenomena. We have uh, uh, conducting bridges, so through the application of a current, we can generate filaments uh, um, uh, going from one electron to the, to the other, and these filaments are also responsible for tuning the resistance level. So in all cases, the resistance level is changed due to different physical chemical phenomena occurring within the material. I can also mention another technology that is being uh, developed, uh, uh, has been developed historically by, Nan by Nanterre, a company in Silicon Valley, collaborating with uh, uh, Fujitsu Mie for uh, 55 nanometer uh, technology with uh, a nanotube RAM. So in this case, uh, it's another physical principle is associated with uh, the interaction between different uh, nanotubes uh, uh, within, uh, within a matrix. So as you could see, we have very different technologies, different phys physical principles. And uh, starting from this, it's possible to see that uh, we have different uh, uh, properties, different performance levels uh, that are associated to the different uh, uh, technologies. So among the figures of merit that are uh, important for evaluating a given technologies, we really need con to consider for non-volatile memories uh, properties associated to the reliability, like uh, uh, the endurance, so the number of cycles that can be supported by, uh, by memory cells. We also need to consider the power consumption, which is another key important fact. So really there's a, a, a need for having memory that consume less, uh, less power. And also the density is also another key aspect uh, that is critical for uh, defining the type of application for a given memory technologies. I want to highlight in this case uh, some key features uh, for, for uh, the emerging MVM technologies. So nowadays we have uh, uh, one gigabit parts for STTM RAM and STTM RAM is also an interesting technology because it provides write speeds and also high reliability and can be used uh, for different types of applications. We shall see later for uh, um, storage accelerators, but also STTM RAMs can be used for application where high reliability is, uh, is needed. So the technology that is providing nowadays among the emerging NVM technologies, the highest uh, uh, density is uh, 3D cross point, phase change memory that uh, is available with uh, 128 gigabit per die. So, this, uh, this is the highest density for emerging MVM. It is superior to the case of, uh, of DRAM, but cannot, of course, compete with uh, the huge density levels that are achieved with uh, 3D NAND uh, technologies nowadays. And that's why PCM is a technology intermediate in terms of density between NAND and DRAM. It is called a, a storage plus memory type of technologies. And also in terms of speed, it can be really positioned between the two mainstream technologies, NAND and DRAM. Nowadays, if we consider resistive RAM, the highest density that was uh, uh, commercialized in, uh, in uh, standalone parts is eight megabits. So in August 2019, uh, Fujitsu in collaboration with Panasonic, uh, they uh, release into the market this uh, uh, eight megabit part. So it's still limited compared to what we have for STTM RAM and PCM. But uh, we also expect that new products could be uh, released in the, in, the, in the short term and could really provide uh, an increase, a significant increase in the density for uh, the big ensemble of RERAM type of technologies. Okay, in these charts here, you can really have a visual representation of uh, uh, the figures of merit and the key properties for uh, emerging non-volatile memory technologies. I would like to highlight uh, that the key properties uh, for evaluating really the applications for, for, for these technologies are density, the speed, of course, the power consumption, and in particular, uh, the price. It's interesting to see that uh, uh, in terms of, um, of price, uh, so 
Today, the, the emerging NVM technologies, uh, except PCM, are still uh, extremely costly. So they cannot yet compete uh, uh, with DRAM. In uh, 2019, we have STTM RAM, which is really still far from uh, being competitive against DRAM in terms of price, but is getting close to uh, the price per bit of, uh, of NOR type of technologies. In terms of density, so with the one gigabit part for MRAM that are available um, by Everspin, so um, the competition is becoming stiffer and um, there are more opportunities. So, of course, to take all DRAM type of application, it will be needed to have higher density in the future. But uh, the highest density for STTM RAM could be also um, useful for start competing with the high density NOR parts, let's say, for two gigabit of more um, density in terms of uh, bit per, per die. So PCM, as you can see in, in the two charts uh, on the right of these slides, uh, has characteristics that are intermediate between NAND and DRAM. And um, it is currently sold to a price which is inferior to the price of DRAM, so approximately 50% of the price of DRAM. But uh, uh, in terms of, uh, of the cost, uh, it's really challenging still at this point. So we have a key player, Intel, that is commercializing the technology, but is not uh, uh, having uh, positive profits for the commercialization of uh, uh, 3D CrossPoint because the cost uh, is still high. But Intel can really promote the sale of these technologies, losing money in the memory business, but then gaining money thanks to the higher sales in its processor business. Here in this slide 14, you can see uh, the technology roadmap for uh, the scaling of standalone technologies. You can see that uh, PCM is, uh, is really in, uh, in the middle between, uh, uh, between uh, NAND and DRAM in terms of density in gigabit per die. And we might have in the future also RERAM if really we will have, as uh, we expect, new players enter, new key players entering with products uh, in the 100 gigabit range uh, uh, type of uh, densities. It will be possible also for uh, uh, RERAM type of products uh, to start competing uh, with the PCM in the storage plus memory market. For STTM RAM, the density is expected to remain uh, below to the case of DRAM. So, and it will be important for the coming years to have uh, a continuous uh, uh, technology scaling in order to have higher density part, uh, ideally up to eight gigabit, in order to start having uh, uh, new applications like uh, persistent memory applications or in the longer term, eventually non-volatile memory DIMMs. In slide 15, you can see a similar type of analysis for the case of uh, embedded uh, memory technologies where we compare different types of uh, uh, parameters, including uh, uh, you know, the power consumption, including also the, the speed. So, and among the, the different types of emerging technologies, we have STTM RAM, which is particularly promising due to the low power consumption and uh, to the, the high speed. So it can approach a, a sort of last level cache type uh, of application targeting part of the SRAM, uh, embedded SRAM market. But we, it's important to mention that for these embedded technologies, also the cost and the reliability at high temperature are important factors. We have some developments in the embedded space also for resistive RAM and for phase change memory. Resistive RAM is developed in particular because of the relatively low cost and is also easy to integrate. I, I think, for instance, to a company we beat that is uh, using fab-friendly materials like the silicon oxide that has made the technology easy to, to, to integrate. And we have also another key player, ST Microelectronics, that is uh, portioning the activities with uh, embedded phase change memory, really thanks to the reliability of the technology and the robustness for uh, automotive applications. In slide 16, you can see the uh, technology node scaling roadmaps for uh, the emerging technologies and also compare with uh, mainstream embedded technologies like the SRAM and the eFlash. 
So, of course, in terms of technology node, it will be impossible for emerging MVM to compete against the SRAM, which is developed already at very small nodes for leading edge applications like application processors for, uh, for smartphones. So, in 2019, uh, the big foundries are developing the technology on 28, uh, uh, 22 nanometer nodes. The first target will be uh, e flash replacement. And the reason is because e flash is facing some scalability. Uh, challenges at 28 nanometer. In particular, the cost of fabrication of uh, embedded flash is getting higher and the complexity also is getting higher. There's a, a larger number of uh, mass headers for e-flash with uh, technology scaling. So foundries are really looking for new opportunities uh, for uh, start uh, uh, replacing uh, uh, e-flash at technology nodes uh, below um, 28 nanometers. And there are developments by all the major foundries. In this table, I summarize uh, the key partnerships uh, between foundries and uh, other developers of uh, IP uh, for emerging MVM. And uh, you can see that all uh, the top foundries and also IDM like Intel are developing uh, uh, em embedded emerging and volatile memory technologies. So TSMC is working on both resistive RAM and uh, STTM RAM with different types uh, of applications for the two technologies, like resistive RAM is uh, being developed in particular for uh, um, low power type of IoTs, as well as it is included in 40 nanometer uh, ultra low power processes for uh, power management IC applications. We have global foundries that is really active in the field of MRAM and actually a fresh news that was uh, uh, released today by global foundries is the beginning of uh, the first uh, uh, production ready embedded MRAM for application in IoTs and automotive. So this is also very interesting news. Uh, the claim is that there are several clients that are uh, um, uh, interested in the adoption of the technology embedded in RAM as a potential replacement of uh, eFlash for nodes uh, below uh, 28 nanometer. As I mentioned before, uh, Samsung was the first player announcing the mass production in March 2019 of embedded in RAM, and this will be on an FTSOI type of technology platform, as in the case of global foundries on the 28 nanometer for uh, Samsung and 22 nanometer FDSOI for global foundries. UMC in Taiwan is also uh, carrying out development activities for uh, both technologies, for MRAM in collaboration with Avalanche and for resistive RAM in collaboration with Panasonics. Also in this case, we have different types uh, of application. Microcontrollers is key still. And we have as well, uh, potential application is smart cards, for instance, for RERAM. Intel, uh, is also working on uh, embedded RAM as well as on resistive RAM. And the key application for, in particular, for embedded RAM was uh, presented recently at uh, the IEDM conference in December 2019. And is the use of STTM RAM, uh, embedded STTM RAM for application as uh, L4 caching. ST Microelectronic, as mentioned previously, is developing a phase change memory on 20. 8 nanometer DSOI, and the target is the automotive market, so microcontrollers that can be suitable for the uh, automotive market. And then there are some other activities by um, other emerging MVM companies that uh, will be uh, announced in the future for the use of their embedded MVM technologies in uh, system on chips or microcontrollers or other type of products. So um, from what you have seen so far, uh, we, we, we could also um, consider the fact that the activities on embedded RAM has somehow advanced faster than for other technologies because we have multiple foundries, almost all the foundries, top foundries that are working on embedded RAM. And there is also an intense activities by equipment suppliers that are providing uh, new solutions to uh, difficult technical challenges. So we expect that uh, MRAM will be the first uh, uh, embedded emerging MVM to take off in the next year and will give rise uh, to the growth of the uh, embedded MVM market. So first we will have a knee flash replacement 
So in microcontroller and SOC, and then in the second term, we will have, starting from 2022, 2023, we might have the replacement of SRAM in last level cache type of application. And it was, this will also give rise to a growth in the, in the production of wafers with embedded MRAM and to the overall uh, uh, MRAM market. In slide 19 here, I provide a few examples of the equipment supplier's involvement with uh, embedded MRAM. So there are some critical challenges related to the manufacturing of MRAM, like the deposition of the MTJ stack, which is kind of complex uh, with several layers, uh, with very small thicknesses. Uh, and uh, it's important to have uh, uh, suitable tools uh, optimized for the deposition of uh, a specific uh, MTJ stack. And there are key players that are providing solutions to foundries to continue developing the technologies and, uh, and the embedded MRAM business. The etching is another critical aspect. And also here we have key players like Applied Materials, Canon, Tokyo Electron, RAM Research, Hitachi. And these are non-exhaustive lists. But, uh, so it's just to give you some examples of uh, the activities that are really uh, moving on in the field uh, of memories. Another key aspect for magnetic memories related to the metrology and the testing, particularly we need to be able to test the magnetic properties as well of the, of the memory cells and eventually to test them uh, uh, in real time during manufacturing. And there are also some interesting activities by companies like H-Probe, Advantest, Microsense and Carpers cuppers that are really um, enabling the uh, production, moving towards really mass production of the technology. So in slide 20, I uh, summarize here the different applications for uh, emerging MVM, standalone on the left and embedded on the right. So we can use standalone emerging MVM as fast, reliable memories as targeting industrial type of application or transport, uh, aerospace, medical. So these are the application targeted by, uh, for instance, toggle MRAM manufactured by, by, by Everspeed. In this year's uh, edition of the report, we are considering also standalone code data storage is sort of a NOR uh, mm, flash replacement. So where emerging NVM could start be competitive in terms of cost and density with NOR, particularly at high density and could start uh, being used uh, for uh, uh, this type of applications like executing uh, in place memories, also for IOTs and so on. Then we have persistent memories. Here we include the non-volatile DIMMs and we include as well the persistent memory that is being commercialized by Intel with, um, uh, with uh, Optane. And low latency storage drives. In this case, we have uh, all the emerging MVMs that are used for boosting uh, the performances and uh, reducing the latencies of, uh, of, uh, of SEDs. So both the 3D cross point that is used as storage uh, media, but also uh, those emerging MVMs like NRAM that can be used as write caches into SSDs. In the embedded space on the right, we considered uh, applications like the use of um, non-volatile memories in uh, analog integrated circuits where they could replace um, uh, EEPROMs like one-time programmable or multi-time programmable memories. So low density um, low capacity memories that are used in different types of products, among which in particular we consider the power management ICs. Then we have the key applications for embedded emerging MVM is in microcontrollers or in SOCs, where uh, at the beginning we will have a knee flash type of replacement. And in a second term, we might also have a, an SRAM replacement, particularly we considered for MRAM, the potential use in memory buffers for display drivers and CMOS image sensors. In the longer term, we could see emerging MVM uh, started appearing as uh, um, last level cache memory in, um, in CPU chips and later on in the future, eventually in mobile application processors. Another interesting and promising application for emerging MVM is uh, in artificial intelligence and in particular in uh, uh, edge AI uh, chips for inference. So there are multiple companies developing uh, um, the technologies and using uh, new approaches like the analog in-memory computing that could be really implemented using uh, uh, emerging NVM and in particular those uh, resistive type of emerging NVM uh, 
like the resistive RAM or the phase change memory. So all these applications are considered uh, in the report with um, uh, an indication of the activities of the players for each type of market segments. Here you can see that uh, we have uh, activities by players for all the segments that I listed in the previous slides. And uh, uh, at least there is a one emerging NVM technologies that is being considered for, uh, for a given application. I want to mention in particular that for new memories to start uh, uh, to start acquiring new uh, uh, market opportunities, it would be critical really to decrease uh, the price uh, per bit and uh, to be able to increase the densities. This will allow to uh, start uh, um, accessing new types of markets. At the bottom right of this uh, chart, you can really see that uh, we have the largest market like the DRAM and the NAND. And if the density and the cost per bit will be compatible, then we might start seeing some of the um, DRAM and the NAND market that could be start tackled by uh, emerging technologies. Of course, we are not uh, really talking about uh, new memories replacing NAND and DRAM, but for certain specific applications, we might have uh, emerging NVM uh, taking part of uh, uh, of, uh, of the DRAM market, what is called typically a cannibalization of the of the market. So we have, for instance, persistent memory that uh, is uh, typically used in combination with DRAM for database type of applications and in part is uh, reducing the contact of DRAM in certain systems. We have also low latency drives like based on 3D cross point that uh, could uh, take some of the storage type of functions uh, for a certain specific type of applications where low latency is really the key. Okay, so in slide 23, we can see uh, the market projections for uh, uh, emerging non-volatile memory technologies in standalone form. So in 2019, the market is still limited. Here we have in particular um, uh, low latency drives based on 3D cross point, phase change memory, as well as we have the first sales of non-volatile DIMMs that are giving the majority of uh, the revenues for emerging NVM in standalone form. And we expect this market to grow with a CAGR of uh, approximately 40%, and it will be mainly driven by standalone PCM. Uh, the, key techno the key application will be uh, persistent memory. So this will be uh, the, 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 the drive for the market growth uh, in the next uh, uh, five years. But we have also uh, an increase of sales for the other technologies, both for MRAM and RERAM with uh, players uh, uh, boosting the, 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 the sales of their products through uh, different types of applications. So we carry out a similar analysis for embedded applications. So in this chart, uh, we really mentioned the fact that uh, in order for em embedded uh, emerging NVM to be able to start accessing the most promising markets, it's really key to uh, be able to scale the technologies. So we start today at 28, 22 nanometers. It will be possible for embedded emerging NVM to start uh, being adopted in uh, microcontrollers, uh, replacing eFlash. We, all, we uh, expect also that a certain em embedded emerging NVM like the RERAM could start being adopted in uh, analog ICs. I mentioned previously uh, TSMC using RERAM in the 40 nanometer uh, node for a PMIC type of application. But of course, it would be really interesting when these technologies eventually will scale uh, at uh, leading edge nodes. That would be really challenging, but uh, it's a... Uh, um, really an opportunity for start tackling um, very promising markets like the SRAM for caching application. In the beginning, it will be a last level cache of applications, but uh, if far further scaling and uh, new technologies will be available, for instance, the SOT technologies, then it might be possible also to start accessing uh, uh, low level uh, uh, caching application, level two or level one, ideally. But this will, of course, require uh, require some time. And here are the market projections for uh, the embedded uh, emerging NVM technologies. Uh, still, in 2019, we have uh, limited sampling, 
and the growth in the future will be driven particularly by embedded MRAM, which is uh, really portioned by all the uh, foundries uh, in 2019 and 2022. We expect also embedded uh, resistive RAM will be uh, generating revenues for a specific type of applications, like for instance, uh, one option could be in smart cards. We have as well PCM that will not be completely out of the race, but will be developed uh, for automotive applications as we have uh, ST Microelectronics that is continuing the activities on uh, microcontroller based on PCM for automotive. Okay, here I would like to compare the two uh, markets, embedded and standalone. So in 2019, standalone is almost uh, the entirety of the market, and this is because um, in terms of revenues, we have 3D Crosspoint, which is generating uh, almost uh, all uh, the revenues for, uh, uh, for emerging NVM. And for embedded, we have a limited uh, uh, sampling that is uh, taken into account uh, for uh, evaluating the market in 2019. In the future, we expect that uh, embedded uh, uh, products uh, uh, will generate uh, revenues for emerging NVMs and the embedded uh, NVM market could grow up to 34% of the overall emerging NVM market. And this, uh, according to uh, our uh, analysis, will be really uh, made possible by the adoption of uh, embedded emerging NVM as a replacement of eFlash in different types of products, uh, in microcontroller, in system uh, on chips, as well as a sort of replacement of uh, an SRAM type of technologies in different ASIC products, like in uh, display drivers, ICs, or in CMOS uh, uh, image sensors. Okay, we were talking about uh, standalone and embedded memory businesses. And here I would like to mention that there is something also uh, moving in, um, in the memory industry because um, so the embedded and, uh, and the standalone memories are really uh, relevant businesses in terms of revenues. And we have both foundry players and IDMs in the standalone memory business that are trying to increase their activity, they are looking for new growth of opportunities. And foundries are really looking at growth of opportunities in, uh, in, uh, in the huge memory market. So it's an appealing target uh, to them. At the same time, we have IDM memory players that they also tend to increase their foundry activities in order to be ready for the deployment of uh, in-memory computing. In-memory computing will be uh, key technologies for reducing the latency in the systems by really um, reducing the time of data transfer between a processor and uh, the memory unit. So companies need to get ready for the deployment of in-memory computing and acquiring embedded memory know-how is really critical. And uh, that's uh, the, the, actually the point of this, uh, of, uh, of this slide is to show that uh, uh, emerging NVM are really this opportunity to expand the business in uh, the two directions. And I would like also to mention here that Intel is uh, really a key player in the sense that he's uh, active in both businesses, standalone memory, because uh, it, uh, it leads the uh, 3D cross-point business with the obtained product uh, and also is involved in the 3D NAND business. But Intel also is a key player for embedded memory because it's developing embedded SRAM for uh, its uh, CPUs. And uh, uh, it's really uh, interesting then at this point to see that there's a lot of uh, um, uh, activities by Intel in all the different emerging NVM technologies, uh, MRAM, uh, resistive RAM, but also newly emerging technologies, like for instance, the ferroelectric memories with new results also being shown uh, by Intel recently on the development of uh, ferroelectric field effect uh, um, of uh, ferroelectric memories. Okay, here I would like to conclude uh, the presentation with uh, a message that I think remains important for uh, emerging NVM, but also for all new types of uh, emerging products. So it's important for new technologies to find some uh, uh, niche applications in the beginning in order to start uh, uh, penetrating into the market and start then uh, giving rise to, to market growth. As I mentioned previously, a key point, a key problem for, uh, for emerging memory is, uh, is related to the price per bit. As in all new technologies, the price, the cost, this point is still very high. 
And it is necessary then to find an approach in order to introduce the products into the market without, in, without risking to have uh, uh, significant losses. And the strategy that is used by players in, uh, in this case, we call it the Trojanor strategy. So the way uh, that is used to start bringing the product into the market is by introducing it into a module or into a system. And here you can see some examples. So Everspin with the STTM RAM parts will uh, commercialize them uh, by introducing in, in, in storage accelerator drives, for instance, in collaboration with smart modular technologies or in the flash core modules by EBM where the memory could act as a write cache. And a similar concept can be applied also to the case of, of uh, Intel. So Intel is uh, capable of commercializing the technologies, the obtained uh, memories, because it combines them into a bundle with uh, uh, the processors. So the profiting business is the processor business, and the memory helps boosting the sales of the new uh, Xeon processor for, uh, for Intel. Uh, the same principle is also valid for the case of uh, uh, embedded memory. So the embedded NVM uh, companies, they really need to work in close collaboration with, um, with foundries. And foundries are those that introduce the embedded NVM into uh, real commercial products like microcontrollers, uh, like uh, uh, system on chips. So where we can introduce the new memory technology in existing products, bringing new benefits where customers are, um, are ready to pay the price for, the, uh, for, for the, the presence of the new technology. And finally, I would like to conclude really summarizing the key points uh, of this presentation. So the emerging MVM market uh, uh, is still dominated by standalone applications, in particularly, particularly by uh, phase change memory with uh, 3D cross point that uh, has enabled finally the takeoff of uh, persistent memory with the first products uh, obtained persistent memory commercialized since April 2019. In the embedded uh, space, we have uh, foundries as well IDM players like Intel that are pushing for the development of uh, particularly embedded STTM RAM. And the goal is to find a new embedded memory technology that uh, can uh, uh, replace eFlash for nodes below 28 uh, nanometer. Also, I want to mention that PCM and RERAM are still in the race and can find application in uh, other types of products, it's really interesting for the future to watch new developments in analog in memory computing based with emerging volatile memory technologies. Then uh, another key point was related to the high cost of uh, new memories because these memories are produced in low volume, so the costs are still high and it will be necessary really in these years to find uh, uh, a Troya Norse type of approach to be able to introduce, to find the right niche for these technologies and to trigger further market expansions through uh, the volume ramp ups. So I would like then to conclude that um, uh, we really do see that the emerging MVM market will keep soaring in the future to answer the question of this webcast. It will become a multi-billion dollar market by 2025 However, this market will be still limited compared to the overall standalone memory market. Uh, and uh, our study indicates that uh, it could remain below 3%, but still a relevant uh, uh, number and really a proximity space for, uh, for companies uh, to carry on their businesses. And with this, I really would like to thank you all for uh, your attention. And um, I'm really uh, open for your question. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Simone. It was a long and interesting presentation. So now the webcast is ending. We will uh, have time uh, maybe for one or two questions uh, to Simone. And uh, we will answer all the remaining ones uh, by emails. Don't, don't worry. So first questions for you, Simone. When do you expect new magnetic technologies such as uh, spin orbit transfer could start having an impact on the market? And also, um, what newly emerging technologies such as uh, ferroelectric field effect transistor or and nanotube rams? 
Okay, thank you very much for the questions. Actually, during my presentation, I couldn't really describe all the spectrum of technologies that are being developed. I mentioned STTM RAM, we have already commercial products into the market, but there are interesting developments also with new uh, magnetic memory technologies and in particular SOT. SOT is interesting because it can provide uh, um, better speeds compared to the conventional STTM RAM, so below one nanoseconds in terms of, of latency. And is also a technology that allows overcoming some problems related to the, to the power and related to the limited uh, uh, endurance. These technologies are, of course, promising, and there are also uh, important players that are uh, continuing their developments and are uh, pushing for their uh, future, commercial, uh, future um, movement towards uh, commercialization, although the path is still uh, long, to our opinion. We don't expect to have uh, a, an impact on the, on the market, uh, let's say, in the next uh, four to five years. But um, STTM RAM in the embedded form could start tackling, we mentioned, the last level cache applications. And the uh, um, key application for SOT will be in uh, a lower level caching, so like level two or level one, because of really these uh, uh, good advantages in terms of, uh, of, of speed. So, um, for the other technologies, so ferroelectric field, ferroelectric field effect transistor is another very interesting uh, technology that is being developed in particular by the ferroelectric memory company in Germany in collaboration with global foundries, uh, for example. And we believe this uh, is a promising technology because it's based uh, on, uh, on materials that are commonly used in, uh, in semiconductor fabs and it really provides uh, uh, the non-volatility properties to, to, to transistors. So this is a technology that uh, it's currently under development. There are uh, uh, progresses that have been reported uh, by different players, and we believe uh, the promise is there for ferroelectric field effect transistor, although at least three to four years might be necessary for uh, uh, a, a complete development of the, of the technologies before moving to uh, commercialization. The last technology that you mentioned is uh, NRAM, is based on the nanotubes. Uh, so these are technologies that was uh, developed by Nantero and in collaboration with Fujitsu. So um, I think there are still developments going on for NRAM. Recently, uh, the fab that was involved in the fabrication of NRAM, uh, Fujitsu Mie, was acquired by UMC. I believe still there are activities uh, that might be delayed because of this some reason, but that could continue in the future. And uh, we are also looking forward to see uh, what's coming as for NRAM. But um, it could be also really promising uh, opportunity for these technologies for uh, high density and uh, uh, high speed applications. I think I mentioned all the technologies. Other questions? Yes, good. Good, good, good. Well, so one last question, because uh, we're a bit late. Does you all think that Micron's new drive, the uh, X100, will be a strong competitor to Optane? And also, are there other uh, players planning to introduce storage class memory products to compete uh, against this one? OK, thanks for the question. So. So what we see right now for 3D cross-point uh, products is really that the key business is in persistent memory. So where the 3D cross-point chips are used in, uh, um, in, uh, in the DIMM format, in non-volatile uh, modules that are connected to the memory bus. So, and in this case, Intel is really in, uh, in, uh, in a in an advantageous position because um, it can really provide a unique solution based on combination of processors uh, and uh, uh, obtain memory. So it has acquired significant advantage compared to the competitors. And uh, Micron, if it introduces this uh, uh, drive uh, type of products, uh, will start competing with the, the Obtain SSDs. Yes, the competition is there. The figures of merit for the SSDs are really uh, promising, as announced by Micron uh, uh, at the end of last year. So we think the competition with the obtained drives is there, but the core of the business for uh, 3D cross point and persistent uh, and, uh, and obtain is, uh, is really in the persistent memory type of application. So new developments are necessary, and I think a lot of work is being done uh, for the use also of new interconnects, new standards and protocols 
so that also new player could start accessing this type of application. And I think, yes, it might be possible that uh, new players could start entering this uh, storage plus memory uh, business in the coming years. And we are really looking forward to seeing new movements, new announcements uh, in, the, in, the, in the future. Thank you very much. So it's a very interesting uh, and moving market. So the webcast is ending now and you will soon receive the link to the recorded session by email. Also, please feel free to share uh, this presentation to your colleagues. And finally, let me remind you that uh, you can find all our reports on our website, i-micronews.com. So we have uh, different reports and also we are, have, uh, we are having uh, monitors on DRAM and NAND, as, as you can see, which is a, a new offer since last year. So do not hesitate to contact us if you have additional questions. You can find our contact details on the last slides. Thank you very much, all of you, for joining us today. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.